Looking at the new powerful Ryzen 3000 processors for your new build? We got you covered. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Rick, the host for this episode of MSI Procast. Today we'll be showing you how to get the most out of the AMD Ryzen 3000 chipset. And I'm really excited as these CPUs provide an amazing amount of cores and speed at a price that's in the reach of more consumers. This guide will show you our steps to overclocking the Ryzen 9 3900X, a 12 core, 24 thread beast, running at a base 3.8 gigahertz, up to 4.6 gigahertz boost frequency. MSI's latest X570 motherboards make it easy for you to tweak your processor to get the most out of your Ryzen CPU. Gamers, YouTubers, and especially content creators are looking forward to the power that the AMD Ryzen 3000 line has to offer, giving a boost to productivity, multitasking, and reducing rendering times. It's not hard to get a few hundred more megahertz with the right hardware setup, so you can enjoy even more power from your new CPU. Let's get to it. Before we start, we'll remind you that while most motherboards and CPUs have power protection and thermal throttling to shut down before damage occurs, we are pushing the CPU beyond its normal operational settings. Following our steps should be safe, but you do so at your own risk. Overclocking requires tuning the voltage for the CPU, called vCore. And although we'll do it safely, too much vCore can fry your shiny new CPU and possibly motherboard also. To give you an idea, even a 0.5 volt increase is a lot. We're not going to attempt to beat records today, so you too should be able to do this safely. And please do tell us about your overclocking experience and your benchmark runs in the comments below. For this demonstration, we'll be using MSI's latest MEG X570 ACE motherboard that supports the new AMD Ryzen 3000 processors using a robust 12 plus 2 plus 1 IR digital power system and feature-packed BIOS for full control. There's three M.2 Lightning Gen 4 slots for your ultra-fast storage needs, all equipped with M.2 Shield Frozer heatsinks. Covering the VRMs is our Mystic Light Infinity design using an LED reflection effect. MSI's Mystic Light does 16.8 million colors with 29 different LED effects and controls onboard headers to light up your whole PC and compatible peripherals. Looking at memory, the four DIMM slots all have steel armor as well and can overclock selected RAM modules to a blazing fast 4600 MHz. Proper cooling is essential, so our extended heat pipe design connects the VRM banks and runs all the way down to the X570 Frozer heatsink with a patented double ball bearing fan to keep things cool. On the rear panel, we've got Wi-Fi 6. That's the 802.11ax spec and onboard 2.5 gigabit LAN. At the front, there's four SATA 3 ports with Easy RAID and M.2 Genie. Dual 8-pin power connectors to unleash maximum performance feed into our improved digital power design with titanium choke twos and the highest quality components. And with three steel armor reinforced PCIe Gen 4 slots for a strong hold, the X570 ACE supports both AMD Crossfire as well as SLI setups. Overclocking the AMD Ryzen 3900X will generate quite a lot of heat, so controlling core voltage is important. Remember, more voltage times each of the Ryzen 3000's cores equals a lot more heat. To handle this, we'll be using a hefty Corsair H150i Pro RGB 360mm AIO liquid cooler we would suggest using at least a 240mm radiator for long-term stable results. Powering our rig is a Corsair HX850 with headroom for top-of-the-line graphics card power draw. Overclocking needs a good power supply with solid 12 volt rails, two ATX 8-pin connectors, and we recommend at least a 700 to 800 watt PSU. For RAM, we have 32 gigs of Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB DDR4 running at 3000 megahertz. And for our display, we have an MSI Optics MAG 271 CQR. We'll be using an NVMe M.2 drive, giving us blazing fast boot times for Windows, making the latest games load very quickly, and for video editing, they also make great scratch discs. Let's start with tests for our baseline to compare our overclocking results. Cinebench R15 turns in a nice 3100 points while Cinebench R20 scores 7,021 marks, and Blender's BMW test completes in 2 minutes, 40.9 seconds. So let's start, and there's a couple of ways to tweak and overclock this 3900X. Okay, hitting the power key, we'll tap the delete key and get into the BIOS. Here we can see the base clock 
and DDR frequencies of 3.6 GHz and 2133 MHz, respectively. First tweak we can do is to precision boost overdrive, so we'll hit F7 to get into advanced mode. From here, we'll go to overclocking settings and down just a bit to advanced CPU configuration. Hit enter to go into precision boost overdrive. This focuses on single core boosting. Auto is AMD's values. We can step it up to enhanced mode one, two, or three. In testing, we found a sweet spot on enhanced mode two. Using CPU-Z to check our frequency and core temp for temperatures, enhanced mode two gave us a Cinebench R15 result of 3108 versus 3100 stock. Next test was Cinebench R20, and it came up with 7,119 points, 98 points up from stock, a small boost. Blender's BMW took a point half second longer at 2 minutes 41.41, which is within statistical variance. That's a very simple boost, but let's try to push this chip. We aim to hit at least 4.2 GHz for the CPU. We'll overclock the CPU separately first, then enable AXMP for the RAM last. Each processor has slightly different overclocking headroom. Generally, the Ryzen 9 3900X can hit between 4.2 to 4.3 on all cores. 4.4 GHz if you get a really good chip. For overclocking processors, think of a triangle with workload, current, and temperature, which interact with one another. Too much or too little in one will impact the other two. For example, undervolting the CPU will reduce temperatures, but will likely affect benchmarks negatively. After you find your max stable overclock for long-term use, back it down slightly. Back in OC settings, we'll go to CPU ratio and type in 42. We'll leave the core voltage at default for now and hit F10 and yes to commit and reboot. And we'll fire up Cinebench R15 and we gain 131 over stock, coming in at 3,231 points. What did we gain in Cinebench R20? Just a hair shy of 400 points with 7420 CB marks. Last, we'll try the Blender BMW, finishing over 7 seconds faster at 233.43. You can use Cinebench R20 for stability testing, running it for around 10 minutes. We're getting very close to the thermal limit of the AMD CPU. Even though the thermal sensor is reading under the limit of 115 degrees Celsius, the measuring point isn't exactly at the hottest point of the core. Starting around 95 degrees, according to sensors, your program may crash or your system may shut off completely. If this happens, or if you overclock too much, you may see the LED debug show zero zero. You'll need to turn off your PSU and wait till all motherboard lights are off. Then press the clear CMOS button for five to 10 seconds and release. We have one on the ACE, but if you don't have one, carefully bridge the two pins on the JBAT connector for five to 10 seconds. Either way, turn on your power supply and after a moment, the power button will turn on your rig. Be patient as BIOS resets and try again. But wait, we're not done yet. Let's talk about adjusting the F-Clock, what AMD calls their Infinity Fabric, the communication link between both dies on the Ryzen CPU, which can benefit overall performance. This value is tied to what your RAM can do, and it runs at half your memory speed. If memory speed is below 3600, you could potentially put in values up to 1800 MHz, the upper cap. But if you have a DDR4 4000 kit or higher, the F-Clock max will still be 1800 MHz. With our Dominator Platinum DDR4, first we'll go down to DRAM setting and change the AXMP setting to Profile 1, raising our RAM to 3000 MHz. Next, we adjusted FCLK. We did get to the desktop at 1667, but crashed due to thermos, so we chose the more stable 1600 MHz. Back at CPU ratio, we used the plus minus keys to adjust to 4.25 MHz, and then we hit F10, and click the yes to save settings. Time for results, and at our final settings of 4.25 GHz for the CPU, DDR4 at 3000 MHz, and Infinity Fabric, or F-Clock, adjusted to 1600 MHz, we got a Cinebench R15 score of 3303, 200 points over stock. Cinebench R20 was also impressive at 7518 marks, a rise of just under 500 from the 7021 stock. Finally, Blender's BMW test came in a whole 10 seconds faster at 230.48, beating the stock 240.90 by a good margin. If you want to see more CPU specs, you can also grab the Ryzen Master software from AMD's downloads, which will give you more insight as to how the chip is drawing power 
under load. By the way, the postcode LEDs are useful for determining when to hit delete to enter BIOS. We saw A2, then O2. We tapped delete a couple of times and we got into the BIOS. For further tweaking, you can manually adjust CPU core voltage. The Ryzen 3900X performs well between about 1.35 to 1.4 volts. Lower voltage reduces temps, but too much reduces performance too. Just remember to adjust in very small increments, as even a 0.2 volt jump up affects temperatures, and with too much, you can damage your CPU. You'll need to select AMD overclocking in the BIOS. Then, one line down, you can manually enter the value. We recommend around 1.37 volts if you choose to adjust this. Last is our alternate method. You can use the Game Boost onboard dial with power off, setting it to 4, then turning on the X570 Ace. With our CPU sample, we got a Cinebench R15 score of 3250. Impressive for a small turn of the dial. Before we updated the X570 Ace BIOS from 120 to 130, we did actually get the Ryzen 3900X to 4.4 GHz, though it crashed immediately under load. And we tried the Game Boost setting 6, which is 4.35 GHz, at a custom 1.4 volt setting to get a Cinebench R15 score of 3,422. It crashed the second time though, as thermals exceeded limits. Those of you with more experience may be able to get better results. Finally, some cooling tips. If you're hitting above 90 degrees, then you should lower the core voltage and or core frequency. The H150i uses Corsair Link to monitor the fan speed, and we can choose the fan profile performance. This runs fans at max, useful for stress testing to dump the heat as fast as possible. And lastly, don't forget to visit the hardware monitor section of the BIOS to adjust your fans or configure the default smart fan profile by dragging the circles. If you're streaming, you could set a quieter profile or a more aggressive profile to remove heat for heavy CPU loads like rendering. With your new Ryzen and an AIO cooler, a little tweaking can get you a bit more power for a little time spent in the BIOS. Now we want to know what kind of results did you get with your setup? Please let us know how it went for you in the comments. If this guide helps you or if you learned something, don't be shy to hit that thumbs up button. Thanks for joining us today and we wish you happy overclocking. See you all in the next episode. I'm so happy.